So hello NABJ, my name is Candace Head. I am here with Margo and Aldis, and I'm just gonna talk to them about the creation of this amazing project that is gonna come to the world pretty soon. So what was the process like um, from, from day one? Like what were your feelings, what were your thoughts, and what was kind of running through your mind when you were, when you decided to get this story out to the world? Uh, I guess, you know, when I started to work on the book, it was like a transformation of taking something that felt totally normal and totally um, something I'd taken for granted, which was like growing up in this community with these NASA scientists and engineers who happen to be black or female, and like all of a sudden taking it and looking at it and being like, wow, that is something that's, that's really kind of unusual and maybe Maybe people might think this is an interesting story. Um, so that that was for me. That was sort of uh, six years ago. Wow. Yeah. My path was a bit shorter. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it was actually a bit serendipitous because I was working on a film at NASA when I found out about the story. So come around to the audition process and I said, "Wait, this is that story I just heard about." You know, um, I ordered the book on Kindle, but it wasn't going to get to me until September, so I'm still waiting on the book. <laughs> I have a copy of the book for you, by Thank the you way. Thank you very much. Yes. But um, uh, I felt like, okay, you know, hopefully this is like, you know, I don't know, the cosmos putting it, bringing it together, because I know Biden it was important, and I felt like it was something that, I mean, I, I wanted to be a part of in the best way possible, and being able to play who I played, he is a part of that strong support system that a lot of us need in order to succeed and I got to represent that. Right. So, you know, I, I realized who he was and who he was going to be to little kids, little boys, you know, and understanding their role in the house as a man. I'm like, okay, this has to happen. But, you know, at the same time, it's like, I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm the right guy for it because I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> So I know I expressed this, my team expressed this, and several journalists j journalists in the room expressed that they have never heard of this story. Right. And when I heard about this, I wasn't surprised that I have never heard of this because in America, we see this heroification, right? And we see the erasure of black women and minorities from the narrative. Can you all talk about, in your opinion, why do you think this happens? Mm -hmm. And how can, what, can we, what can we do to prevent it? Yeah. The long version or the short <laughs> Whatever version, version you want. <laughs> Um, I mean, I, I think it's sort of a, a repetitious trend that has been taught historically, you know, from the inception of how this country was founded to, to how we were taught as a culture to view ourselves. Um, we have to work hard to find our value and have to, you know, I remember growing up not seeing stories about black people as heroes at all. You know, we heard the battle, you know, it was a and there were slaves and then it was over like what no but growing up as an engineer and then and, and, uh, I mean I loved inventors I studied and George Washington Carver was one of my heroes I was like man make a hundred and something things out of a peanut like but that's what we are that's who we are you study the the, the inception of mathematics where it came from Egypt Africa let's get together so I mean who knows if that's true but that's the theory Regardless of the theory, they had applied mathematics there in a version of it, which a lot of people learned from. So I found it very important to constantly search and sort of, you know, cultivate the idea of who we are, what we are, and what we've been through. Because it took a lot of great people to get to where we are today. And we need to constantly remind ourselves of that. Yeah, and I would just say that, you know, growing up um, in Hampton, my sister's here, you know, we knew a lot of these women. We, you know, our dad is a research scientist. He retired uh, as a research scientist at NASA. And so I think there's also an aspect of this was the normal life and where we grew up. And so we just said, well, you know what? These people are scientists and mathematicians. Well, that's just what they do. Just like, you know, this one is a professor and that one is, you know, the Avon lady or, you know, whatever. And um, we all know it's, her. It, yeah, it just seemed, or the Mary Kay lady, you know, it just seemed totally normal. And so um, I think to a certain extent, it was also because the community where these women grew up or where they worked. Um, they were they were just ordinary people as a part of the community, even though they were doing extraordinary work. 
Um, and that, you know, I think it's really incumbent upon us who know these stories and who have been exposed to them to say, you know what, it's our responsibility to tell these stories and to bring them to the larger audience so that everybody is able to change their perception of these people, of our people, of women, of scientists, of black women who are scientists. You know, there are so many different blind spots, but if we present these women and the, the totality of their women with their husbands, with their children, with their jobs, then, you know, you have a different concept of what's possible. Absolutely, it's beautiful. So going along with that, um, we understand, like I said, this story isn't told, we don't know about it, or now we're gonna know in the future. But in your role, you what stood out to me is you said that you want your, your character to kind of serve as an example for black men. So when we see these black women being erased from history and we don't talk about it, we don't talk about them in their context of STEM and things like that, what can black men do to make sure that black women are celebrated and represented in history? I think it's simple, just own up to our responsibility to the black women for what they've done for us in our lives. My mom is the pinnacle of what hero means to me. You know, Marine, single mother, she raised three kids, all of whom have gone on to be successful human beings and that we are chasing our dreams and we can do so freely because we had the foundation given to us by her. I think we need to understand how important it is to lift one another up just for the sake of, uh, I would say, securing our future in terms of our culture and the idea of what it means to be black. Because if it's not us, then who? You know, Levi is sitting here in a situation in the 60s where the choice he makes is not the popular choice. It's completely avant-garde. It's not even... I'm, I'm certain if he told some of his friends, they would laugh at him and some probably would stop hanging out with him. Oh, you're going to go support your wife while she goes and she wants to become the breadwinner and you're going to sit home with the kid? What you going to do? Like, you know, it's like, you know, this is probably what he faced in terms of trying to support her, regardless of what the situation was. But for him, he had to choose love and heart and support because that was his wife. And that's what it means to be a husband and to be a man for your family. I'm gonna support you. And that is our responsibility when we take on these roles as fathers and husbands and boyfriends and brothers and you know, that's, that's our job. So really just do your job. I think it's really, that's, that's really beautiful, that sentiment, because in real life, um, Levi Jackson loved that his wife was so smart and mm -hmm. so talented and successful and he supported her and even when um, he retired after or before she did mm -hmm. and there was a period where they were taking care of their granddaughter mm -hmm. and he would pick her up from the bus and walk her home to school so mm -hmm. I mean I think that you know that is it's such a beautiful thing to have that and to you know portray that it's it's really it's, wonderful yeah, it's not it's not celebrated but most people don't realize that's what being a man is any business you know, have business. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I know we're all looking forward to the book and the movie. Um, so do you guys have any final thoughts or anything you'd like to add? I would just say go we'll see the movie. It's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought your thoughts earlier, all this earlier, when you were talking about how this is a movie for everybody, this, this is a book for truly. everybody, this is an American story. You know, um, you know, and, and I don't know if you guys saw Michelle Obama's speech at the Democratic Convention last week, but a lot of the Shut things, down. like I was in tears because a lot of the things that she was saying were a lot of the reasons why I wrote this book. And it was just about being American and owning that American story and feeling like, you know what, I'm American too and I'm gonna put my story out there and I'm fusing my dream with the American dream. And I feel like that's really what this is, it's like, these women and their dream came together with the American dream, and everybody should go and see this movie and read this book. 